So there you go, eight different NASDAQ 100 index ETF that you can choose according to your preference, regardless if you are looking for the US or European version of it. Hey, what is up guys? As much as we love the S&P 500 index, I think it's about time for me to dissect and introduce you to the second largest index family in the US, the NASDAQ 100 index. The index is a subset of the popular NASDAQ Composite Index, which tracks 100 of the largest US and international non-financial companies listed on the NASDAQ stock market, such as Apple, Microsoft, Google, Tesla, and etc. It is commonly known as a tech-heavy index, with over 50% of its weightage dominated by technology companies, and historically, it has also significantly outperformed the S&P 500 index thanks to its US tech concentration, but that does come with its drawback as well, but more on that later. So in this video, I will cover most of the essentials that you need to know about this index. What are the specifications? What are the available ETFs to track this index in the form of US and island domicile versions? which version of the ETF suits your need, and my verdict as to whether you should invest in this ETF as part of your investment portfolio. But before we begin, a quick tap of the like and subscribe button down below goes a long way for this channel. Thank you so much for that. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. We'll start with the specifications of the index by using the QQQ ETF as an example since it is the largest US ETF tracking it. As I've mentioned earlier, the ETF includes 100 of the largest non-financial companies with its top 10 weightage dominated by tech stocks such as Apple at 12.5%, Microsoft at 10.1%, followed by Amazon, Tesla, Nvidia, Google, Facebook, and etc. It is predominantly a tech-centric ETF with a 50.3 weightage in that sector, 17% in both the consumer discretionary and communication services sector, and the remainder in healthcare, consumer staples, industrials, and utilities. For this QQQ ETF, it has a total expense ratio of 0.2% only since it is a huge fund with more than 160 billion US dollars of assets under management. As of the recording of this video, it is currently being traded at a little over 300 US dollars per share, and it also comes with a little over 0.5% of dividend yield since it is a distributing ETF by nature. I will show you the different island domicile variants at the later section of this video. In terms of its performance, the QQQ ETF is no stranger to stellar performance thanks to its underlying US tech stocks. Although 2022 hasn't been a great year to the ETF and it is now down more than 20% year to date, no thanks to the stock market correction that weighs down on most of the tech stocks it still has a pretty decent long-term track record with a 1-year return of 14% per annum, 3 years return of 27% per annum, 5 years return of 23% per annum, and 10 years return of over 19% per annum. And just to put that into perspective, it still outperforms the S&P 500 index in terms of long-term returns since the US tech stocks historically have been one of the strongest growth components in the US market, if not the global market. But of course, just keep in mind that past performance is no guarantee of future results. If you zoom out and look at the big picture, it is currently trading close to its 52-week low of $280 US per share, which is far from its 52 weeks high of over $400 US per share. Hence, that represents about 10% downside to its 52 weeks low or 33% upside to its 52 weeks high. According to the data by Morningstar, it has a 3-year beta of 1.07, which means it is more volatile volatile than the broad market and also currently it has a 3 year sharp ratio of 1.02 and in case you are new to this sharp ratio indicates the reward per unit of risk so usually a sharp ratio of more than 1.0 is more preferred and just FYI the current sharp ratio for S&P 500 stands at 0.9 no thanks to the uncertainty going around right now let's talk about its ratings analysts from Morningstar gives it a 5 star neutral rating as of the middle of May which indicates their recommendation for QQQ ETF as one of the best performers in the market in terms of risk adjusted return over the past 3, 5 or 10 years. However, over on the other side at Seeking Alpha where independent writers can contribute their thoughts, they come to a median consensus of whole 
where most of them either favor holding or selling the QQQ ETF. So take in those ratios and ratings for what it's worth. Let it be a guidance for your investment decision as opposed to a strict rule or advice to follow. Now let's shift the conversation towards the other ETFs tracking the NASDAQ 100 index. In this list, starting from the left, I have two US ETFs with the ticker symbol QQQ and QQQM, which are both traded in the US NASDAQ stock market. The first one being QQQ is the one that I've just covered in this video and it's the largest and most liquid ETF tracking the index right now. However, Invesco came out with a new ETF with the ticker QQQM in late 2020 because if I were to be precise, QQQ is actually a unit trust instead of an ETF. It's more or less the same except some structural difference. So in order to not confuse you, just treat it like an ETF in this context since it trades just like any other ETFs. Between these two, QQQM has a lower expense ratio since it is still a new fund at a total AUM of 4 billion only compared to its predecessor at 165 billion US dollar. As such, it has a much lower liquidity at below 1 million only, hence why QQQ is the much preferred option to short term traders. So if you are choosing between these two, go for QQQ if you want liquidity for short to medium term trades but if you are just a buy and hold investor like me go for the QQQM version instead to enjoy the lower expense ratio as well as the lower unit price. Now let's shift our attention towards the right hand side where I have tabulated 6 different island domicile ETFs that tracks the index. If you are from the Europe, you will have no choice but to go for the European ETFs since you are unable to trade US ETFs, no thanks to the PRIIP regulations restricting you. Anyways, back to this table, among the 6 island domicile ETFs that I have cherry picked, 2 of them are traded in US dollar. Two of them are traded in Great Britain Pound and another two of them are traded in Euro. So depending on whichever currency you currently hold or prefer to trade in, I will leave this decision in your hands. Six of them are traded in different exchanges such as the Swiss exchange that houses the CSNDX and EQAC ETF the London Stock Exchange that houses the EQQQ ETF and the Germany Setra Exchange that houses the CNX1, EXXT and SXRV ETF. The expense ratio should be more or less the same at around 0.3% to 0.33% per annum and two of them are distributing ETFs in the name of EQQQ and EXXT ETF. So there you go, 8 different NASDAQ 100 index ETFs that you can choose according to your preference regardless if you are looking for the US or European version of it. If you are just an ordinary buy and hold investor like me from a country that has no tax treaty with the US, I would say the QQQM ETF listed on the NASDAQ seems like the best choice here. However, if the estate tax is something of your concern, then perhaps the EQAC ETF listed on the Swiss exchange would be your next best choice. If you want to trade the US or island domicile ETFs that are listed on various stock exchanges like I've just shown you, then look no further. Interactive Brokers is the best broker you can go for. Check out this video or the links down below to start your investing journey with it. So verdict time, should you invest in the NASDAQ 100 index ETFs? Well, if you want a little bit more exposure towards the US tech stocks or just growth in general and you think that the US tech would continue to outperform relative to Chinese tax or whatever for the time to come, then I would say it will never hurt to have this in your portfolio. However, if you don't like what you see in its 50% tech concentration or you think tech companies from China or emerging markets will surpass US tech for the time to come or you don't like the fact that there is a hawkish Fed that might push the interest rates close to 3% which will destroy a lot of growth stocks especially in the tech sector then by all means, this ETF is definitely a good to know but not a must have. If you ask me, I'm not invested in this index or just any other index at the moment as I prefer to have more concentration to achieve higher growth because I can afford to take more risks since I am still young and have a longer time horizon to cater for that. And even if I were to diversify my investment portfolio down the road, I would probably cap this index at around 25% weightage 
because any more of that would mean too much concentration risk. Alright, I hope you found this video helpful. If you like ETF videos in such format, then feel free to let me know which ETF I should look at next. I'll be more than happy to look at it. And with that said, thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay invested, and as usual, I will see you in the next one.